Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we're looking in uh, Smith's textbook, uh, Chapter 3, Volumetric Properties of Pure Fluids. And we had been looking at the virial equation of state in class. And next, we're starting to look at cubic equations of state. And one of the things that we had looked at was that if you plot P versus V, for instance, uh, for various temperatures, you end up with these three curves shown here. And we either get one root or three roots or repeated roots, okay? And so those are these possible conditions here. And if we only get one real root, then we also have two complex conjugate roots, and those are non-physical, so there's not a complication there. And if we choose something below the critical point, then when we choose a value of P, for instance here, we end up with three root, real roots, and the positive, or the positive, they're all positive. The largest root is going to represent the vapor. The smallest represents the liquid. And the one in between is non-physical. And then we have the case where it exactly hits the critical point. And at these, we end up with repeated roots. So there are three roots, but they are repeated. And so in this case, that is an indication that we are exactly at the critical point. Now, the cubic equation sort of is a uh, stretching of the virial equation of state. Um, it's better than the ideal gas law. It's not totally grounded in theory. It's kind of semi-theoretical. But it, a cubic equation is the simplest mathematical form that can represent both the liquid and the vapor. And the first of these, it's very important, significant uh, in terms of applicability and getting people really started on track of coming up with equations of this form was van der Waals and in 1873 he developed this equation that improves upon the ideal gas law by accounting for the fact that molecules are not points so they have size that's the B correction there and that they are attracted and repelled by each other which is the A over V squared term. Uh, we also will see that some of the models will include a term for being not round, which will be embedded within the A. Now, our most popular cu cubic equations of state are the Redlich Kwong, 1949, and then in the 70s, we have both the Suave Redlich Kwong and the Peng Robinson. Yeah, they're still continuing work in this area. But these are the ones that are probably most frequently used, especially by industry, would be these last two. And all of the equations can be written in this form here, where the parameters are summarized in this table here. And you can pause the video to spend more time looking at that table. The parameters come from forcing a fit at the critical point. And they do these in terms of TR, which is T over TC, and PR, which is P over PC, reduced pr critical properties. Uh, and if you do this, if you look at dP dV when T is the critical temperature, so this TR is equal to 1, that needs to be 0, and the second derivative needs to be 0. Remember, at the critical point, we need to have those repeated roots, and this is a way of guaranteeing that. And if you do this, we end up with these solutions shown here. Now, there are various ways that we can take the, that general equation and rearrange it. None of them are very satisfying. None of them say z equals something that doesn't involve z in it that we could easily solve. But there are two forms that are very useful uh, because these can be used with a technique called successive substitution. Unfortunately, successive substitution is an easy math technique for solving equations, but it doesn't work all the time. 
However, we're fortunate that if I use this form of the equation, I can use it for gases and vapors, and if I use this form, I can use it for liquid-like properties fairly well. So we have these two different forms. They have beta and epsilon and sigma in them, O and Q. There's a value of Z on this side, and I'm going to use that to solve for a value of Z on this side. So what's going to happen is we're going to have to come up with a first guess, and we're going to try it successively, hence the name successive substitution. If we look at this more closely, um, what we're going to do is we're going to just start with just a first guess. And if you don't know anything else, sometimes you have a pretty good idea what Z should be. Uh, it's a chemical you work with frequently or whatever. If I don't know anything, if I think it's a vapor, I'm going to start with Z equal to 1. And if I think it's a liquid, then I'm going to start with Z equals 0 0.1. And it's just simply going to help me get to the correct answer fairly efficiently. And then what I'm going to do is, so I have this thing that's going to be a function of z. I am going to plug in my first guess here. So if I thought it was a liquid, I'd put in 0.1 here. I'll do that calculation and come up with a new answer. So maybe this new answer is z equals 0.2. Okay. I'm going to now take that answer and evaluate the function again. And this time, let's say, when I did this, I got z equals 0 0.27. And I keep doing this using my last answer to evaluate the function until I get close enough. Maybe my next guess got to 0 0.27. And at that point, I'm like, yeah, okay, three sig figs. I'm happy with that. Whatever your desired precision is, you're going to go until you start seeing no change in two successive answers. Okay, That gets you your desired precision. And this very easy iterative technique works if you start with the correct form from the previous slide and a good first guess of Z. So if we do this, um, I'm going to suggest that you go to the Redlich-Kwong equation because it's not as hard as some of the others. Uh, it'll get you some experience at doing this. And you need to pause this. And what we want to do is calculate the compressibility factor, so that's Z, for the saturated liquid and the saturated vapor. And do this first, let's say, for the saturated vapor. For N-butane at 110 degrees, where PSAT is 18.55 bar, um, and use the RK equation. So the RK equation is given down here, where the parameters for it are. Remember, TR is T over T, sat, or T critical. Okay, so you're going to need the critical properties for butane. That's 425.1. I need to make sure that these units are uh, the same. So uh, 110 plus 273 to get it an absolute, divided by 425.1. So 0 0.900964. I am going to substitute this into the form for Z for the gases shown here. Uh, notice that epsilon is equal to zero, so therefore I don't really need that term there. Uh, beta is BP over RT, uh, and B is sigma RTC over PC. So in this case, I have my value of sigma given here. Uh, R is just the gas constant, T sub C given here, P sub C given here. This is my temperature, but again, be sure that you are doing this in Kelvin. And this is the pressure that I'm concerned about. 
if you go through and do this, and I did this, so I started with a guess of z equal to 1. My next time when I plugged in z equal to 1, my next time I got z equals 0 0.79. Nine one six two, and as I continued this, I got zero point seven one one eight six five. And so again, pause and go to Excel and try this on your own. Now, what about for a saturated liquid? For a saturated liquid, the form of the equation. This is my form here. I started, again, this is going to be zero, so this is just a z times z plus sigma beta. All the numbers are given up here. Um, when I did this with z equals 0 0.1 as my first guess, I next got 0 0.098423 as my next calculation, and finally ended up with 0 sorry, 0 0.092645 as my answer. So this concludes this lesson on cubic equations of state. We're going to be looking at uh, generalized equations for gases in our next lesson. Thank you very much.